Hello, Mark Crossfield here. Welcome to the Golf Swing Weekly Fix. Slightly different this week. Half the show is going to be indoors. We're in the studio with the sim on. Uh, I feel a little bit like I'm on the golf channel. All I need now is Holly Watson chops and we'll, we'll be kind of there. But anyway, it's just me, I'm afraid, guys. And we've got normal swings coming from the app inside. The weather's so rubbish outside. We've barely got any light, so the cameras just aren't looking very good. So I've tried to flood this as much light as I get my hands on. So hopefully this is okay. This won't be how it normally is. Also, we've got question of the week as normal and golf talk. So loads of do. Inside, outside. Where's Holly Watson chops? Is she coming though? I don't think we booked her. Anyway, let's get stuck in. In this swing, what we're going to see is a classic example of a reverse spine angle. So we see the spine bending this way. So it's actually starting to move the other way towards the target. Coming from, amongst other things, camera's a bit wobbly here, but this hip sway. And then you see the hips kick out and then the spine starts turning the other way. So difficult to get the right sequence on a downswing when you turn your spine this way. So let's give you a great drill to try and feel how to get out of this movement. Um, and it's about visualizing actually where you are here. People find this very hard to visualize. So let's give you a good drill. So we're seeing classic reverse spine and hip sway. So reverse spine means moving your back this way as you move your left shoulder lower than right and turn. So this is the bit that blows people's heads off because if you look from the angle the camera's shooting at me here, when I get people to the top of backswing and they see left shoulder lower than right, so they see this angle here, they think, how can I be leaning that way? Well, it's because you've turned. So what I mean by that, if I stand up here straight, I've done videos on this before, lean my spine backwards, left shoulder lower than right and then turn, it's the left shoulder lower than the right that you're seeing from the 2D camera, but from the front on view, leaning back, left shoulder lower than right, turn. It's that reverse spine angle we need to get rid of to make sure you don't get in such an awkward unload on the way down, if you like. And a great way of doing this is simply just to take a cane. And what I want you to do is place two canes on the floor, one on your target line, and one on your shoulder turn line. So let's pretend you're going to turn your shoulders, say, 70 degrees, 80 degrees. So you can put this line on subject to where you feel you want to turn your shoulders. What I want you to do is stand towards the green line on the floor, set yourself up parallel, hips, shoulders, everything to that line. Then I want you to feel, stood up straight, that you lean forward, say, 10 degrees. Just lean into it a little bit. Then what I want you to do is take the club, Put it over your shoulder like you're going to point it at the target. Drop your left shoulder lower than your right so you can see the ball over your left shoulder. And then turn your feet back to the yellow stick on the floor. And what you're going to find when you do this drill, so starting at that angle, standing upright, leaning forward, say 10 degrees. Point the club over your head as if it's going towards the target. Left shoulder dips lower than the right so I can see where my imaginary ball was. Then bring my feet back is you'll see that gives me positive spine angle. Because of course it does. What happens is you're that leaning forward 10 degrees, dropping your left shoulder lower than your right while leaning forwards and just turning your feet back, it's giving you that positive spine angle. And if you're clever with this drill, it's not easy, but you can actually hit shots doing it. So I'm gonna set myself up to the ball and what I'm gonna do is simply turn my feet away from the ball, lean forwards. So start upright, lean forward, say 10 degrees. Put the club over my shoulder, pointing it at the target as well as I can. Dip my left shoulder lower than right, still feeling like I'm leaning forwards. Bring my feet back and then from there, you could step in there and hit one. You won't hit good shots, but it'll give you an idea of what it feels like to hit the ball from this positive spine angle rather than this negative spine angle, which is so often difficult for people to even see or imagine because when they're shooting video from down the line, if they ever look at themselves, they see left shoulder lower than right and they think, well, they're definitely leaning over, but you can lean over and back. And if you do that, very easy to start with your shoulders on the downswing, give it the over the top, striking, sequencing is thrown, and you'll find your shots just won't be as good as they could be. Let me know how you get on with that.
So let's have a look at this hip turn here. What we're seeing in this swing is the classic over the top down swing. So you can see how the guy here takes it back on one path. We'll put a rudimentary line on here, just to give you an idea. Look, way over the top. Um, so definitely that needs fixing. What's happening now, what's causing that is the lack of separation you get between his upper body and his hips on the backswing. So if I take the club back just so it's hip height, what you see is his hips there have almost turned as far as a stronger player would turn in their whole backswing. And he's done that from the beginning, almost before anything else. So he's getting next to no separation between the hips and the shoulders. So let's give you an idea of what that means. So very common, that classic over the top action. And it's coming from the relationship between the shoulders and the hips and how these two canes relate to each other at certain points of the swing. And what we're seeing from this backswing is if I put these two canes on my body, what happens is we're seeing his hips turn as far as they should in the whole backswing within the first few feet of that backswing. So even when the club is kind of almost halfway back, he's got hips and shoulders almost turning the same amount. Now, if you get to the top of your backswing and you haven't created separation in these two angles. So what I mean by that, let's say I turn my hips 40 degrees, I'm gonna to wanna to turn my shoulders maybe 80 degrees. So I'm separating these two lines. And the reason I wanna do that is A, it's gonna give me a bit of leverage, a bit, bit of coil to try and create some energy. But the other thing it's gonna allow me to do, it's gonna allow the timing of the downswing of these two angles to be in a better sequence. So look, let's just pretend that these two canes are having a race. So having a race from here to the screen. So they start at the beginning and they're in the same spot. Start at the beginning, they're in the same spot. Slight differences into, but let's just call it the same. It's such small amounts. You want to think of it as the same. Now, when I want to make my backswing, what I want to do is separate. So I want this cane, as it starts the downswing, to have a longer journey than the hip cane. Because the shoulder cane is always going to travel faster than the hip cane. So if you don't separate them enough on the way back, then what happens is the shoulders are always going to overtake the hips, which is that classic over the top action which we see from this guy. So we need that race to start the downswing. Bear in mind that this green cane is going to go faster than the yellow cane. The race needs to be not be even at the top of the backswing. The the, the green cane needs almost double the distance to travel, so by the time they get to impact, it hasn't had the chance of overtaking the yellow cane until post-impact. So that's why it's so important that you get that separation on the backswing. As you start your backswing, start turning your shoulders away from your hips. For you, you can almost feel like your hips are doing next to nothing because they're gonna do enough. I think you're gonna find it hard to turn your shoulders and not move your hips. So for you feeling like you're turning your shoulders away from your hips and not moving hips probably will get your hips to turn the right amount now you've got that separation it's easier now for that downswing to be instigated more with the lower half and the lower half to go ahead of the upper half because the upper half's got a long way to catch up with that bottom half if you don't get that separation on that backswing if you just turn these canes the same amount on the way back or certainly for half of the backswing they just turn almost the same amount and get a tiny bit of separation the green cane is going to go loads faster than the hip cane. So the shoulder cane on the downswing is going to travel faster than the, the shoulder one's going to travel faster than the hip one. If you don't create enough separation, the shoulder one's going to overtake the hip one before it gets to impact. And there's your classic smothered over the top strike. That's going to encourage weak grips, leaving the face as open as possible to try and carve the ball back to target. And you'll, you just won't get a solid strike. So think about on your backswing, turning your shoulders away from your hips, you're gonna find that makes a much more solid strike and help you play some better golf. Question of the week, got a question here coming from YouTube. Ryan's asking, or he says, awesome video, Mark, thank you. Could you please tell me any tips to stop hitting the ball with the driver on the top of the face, making the ball fly into the air with little distance and denting the top of my driver, thanks. Well, I hope you're not skying it that much. But, so, that shot is called a sky so what's happening is he's hitting the top 
of the club head with the bottom of the ball when it hits that rounded edge and just shoots up into the air, shoots way up, makes no distance, it's sky, shoots right up into the sky. Now the most common cause of skying that I see is basically hitting down at the ball with the driver. So to, 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 to sky it, to get the ball off the top of the club, you've got to get the bottom of your arc too low. And there's two ways of doing this. One is to literally just hit the ground first and carry on trying to take a divot. That will get your, if the ball's on the tee, you'll circle too low and you'll catch the top. But I see that rarely. I do see divots in front of the ball with drivers, and that is coming from a descending blow. So where you're hitting down on the ball, squeezing the club under the ball and into the ground, and that's then hitting the top and sky. Where with a driver, you wouldn't want to be any more than one down, maybe two down with your driver. You're probably, to get that skying effect, you're probably six, seven down of it. So angle of attack, six, seven degrees down. Um, for me with a driver, to maximize my distance, and for most of my students with their club head speed, actually hitting up at the ball, one or two degrees, uh, or even three degrees, and some more is going to get the maximum distance, because you're going to get that ball more out the middle of the face and send that energy up through the middle of the ball as well. So little tricks to make sure you are hitting the ball on the way up. First thing is obvious is the ball position. Make sure the ball is inside the left heel. So up front portion of your stance is going to help you hit later in the arc, more on the upswing, hopefully to get the sky. Second thing is if I put the ball forward in my stance and then simply turn with my body and face the ball, that pushes my weight forwards. It tends to make me hit down and across the ball. So even though the ball is forwards, because I've turned and faced the ball, so it's actually the ball is relating to my feet but it's not relating to my body very well that also can make hit down and create that sky so really good checkpoints ball forward in your stance and make sure that you've got left eye behind the ball with your driver if you're hitting off the front so much more forward of you upper body actually just slightly leans behind the ball then from there try and hit it don't be afraid to try and hit it on the upswing so as you come in and hit the ball make sure your weight still goes forward keep your head back feel like the club is going to get lower just before the ball then ascend hit up into it and you'll find you get rid of that sky to hit that sky you need to be hitting down if i hit down if i get that off the top that ball shoots up in the air where if i can feel that i get ball position forwards head behind the ball and then try and hit the ball from there with my weight going forwards i get it more out the middle of the club much better strike and I maximise my distance. So try the things, ball position, make sure your setup is really neat and then just a tweak in your swing to try and make sure you are hitting on the way up. There's other ways of doing it but there's some really basic help to try and help you try and get rid of that sky and make more distance. So Golf Talk this week I put it out to the guys on Facebook and on Twitter and one of the reoccurring things that people wanted me to talk about this week was um, lag. What is lag? What does it do? How does it work? How do you get more lag? All these kind of things. So lag, you'll hear this term a lot. You'll see it on the telly. Commentators will mention how much lag they've got. So what they're talking about is how far behind they leave the club head behind their hands on the downswing. So what happens is they start the downswing is the body goes, hips go, shoulders go, hands start pulling, but the club looks like it's being left behind. And it's this little journey that the hands have got left compared to this massive journey that the club's got left, bearing in mind they want to sequence or catch up almost with each other at impact, that allows that club head to have to, or makes that club head have to have loads of speed if they are to hit the ball straight. So it's this kind of like cracking the whip kind of idea where you leave it behind and then release it right at the bottom at its ferocious pace. Now lag for me is something that I've never really seriously done with students i've never and this is the problem you know i get students going oh, i want to get more lag more distance i try and leave the club back but all i tend to be doing is not in it straight anymore well of course you're not because you're affecting the way you naturally coordinate but the, m the main reason people don't get lag or the lag that they want is because something else is going wrong in the swing so i never really directly deal with lag as such it's fixing other problems to make the club work in a better way i, I fix the sequencing more of the body to create better lag as such it's quite a, in my opinion it's quite an overrated word it's quite an overused word it's something that's almost more happening if you get other things right so for instance just give you an example and there's millions and i can't really go into depth in the time in lag 
what it really really how to really really get lag in this short time because it's so complex it's much more of a one-to-one -one thing you'd need to do with a student but give you a scenario here and this is what I see quite a lot if I make a backswing and then on my downswing I simply slide my hips too far to the left so rather than turning onto my left leg I just slide my hips too far across if I now try and get more lag from here well it's not going to work I'm going to hit the ball almost at the camera so what happens for these people once they've slid the hips across to try and marry the face back up to target, to try and send the ball somewhere towards target from this position, the only thing I can do is start to cast, flip the hands, release that lag at the bottom. So you can see to fix lag for that scenario, it's more about fixing the issue with the hips to try and sort what's going on out with the hands. So you're indirectly fixing it. So lag, lag is simply how far back you see these clubs on the downswing behind hands and body, how far they're leaving it back. That's what they're referring to and it will create more power, more clubbed speed in theory. But it isn't something you should be directly tackling. If you are, you're going to find you're spraying the ball a lot. You need to be going and seeing a coach. Do you need to buy a driver to add 10 more yards? Well, if you improve your timing and your sequencing on the downswing, you probably can improve the driver you're using now by 20 yards without even thinking about lag, but improving those kind of aspects. So get your priorities right. Don't try and think too much about lag. Think about the other issues in your swing that might be creating issues with lag, if you're seeing it on your videos that you're recording on your phones and stuff. Or just go and seek some advice from someone who might be able to help you fix that lag by fixing that sequence. Hope that helps, gives you an idea of what lag is. Um, and thanks for all the sponsors on Facebook. Keep that up, guys, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also, thumbs up the video, post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.